What's up YouTube, my name is John and today I'm going to be outlining the process that I took in converting an ordinary garden shed into my dream home office slash studio. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video as I'll be outlining the budget that I spent in case this is a project that you're considering as well. Earlier this year we bought a house that was perfect in every way other than it didn't have a dedicated home office for me to work from. It did however have this garden shed and so my wheels started turning on how I could eventually turn this shed into a home office. Originally, I planned on doing most of this build myself as a DIY project, but life had other plans, and when we learned that we had a new baby on the way, I decided to hire a contractor who ended up doing the bulk of the work I'm about to show you. So, this shed was built, I believe, around 2006 by the company Tough Shed. That's the one that you always see in the Home Depot parking lots. I don't have photos of how the inside looked when we purchased the property, but it was obvious that someone had the same idea as me in the past. The inside had been wired up for power and lighting and had drywall up. Someone had also installed a skylight. There were these two huge shelves that made the space pretty unusable for someone of even average height. Plus, I could tell that the skylight had been leaking at some point. So, we decided to demo all the drywall and start over with the studs, which is what you see here. You can see a lot of water damage to the frame from that skylight, so we took it out and replaced the rotted wood. The next big step was to replace the original barn-style door with a standard residential door. I decided to move the door to the side of the shed to maximize the usable space inside. I also replaced the original single pane windows with modern dual pane windows for better thermal and acoustic insulation. The goal of the space was twofold, create a nice private office to work from, but also to use as a creative space to write and record music in the future. So acoustics were taken into consideration a lot throughout this build. After taking out those large shelves, we reframed a new drop ceiling so we could insulate the shed from the hot summer sun. For the insulation in the roof, we went with R30 craft face fiberglass insulation. For the walls, I purchased a full pallet of 24 by 48 mineral wool battens. Mineral wool works great as insulation in a warmer climate that doesn't freeze. And the bonus is I'll be able to reuse some of the insulation to build acoustic sound absorption panels for the inside of the shed later on. Before the drywall went in, we wired up four outlets inside and installed the power boxes for four LED recessed lights in the ceiling. Here's a photo of the completed insulation after the wiring was completed. We're ready for drywall. For this build, we went with 5 8 inch Fire Code X drywall. This was a more expensive choice and a little harder to install, but it was done in hopes of isolating some additional noise from the outside in and vice versa. Here's the drywall going up and the first coat of primer paint. The final coat of paint is a nice clean white as well. Inexpensive waterproof laminate plank flooring was chosen for budget purposes and it should hold up well for years to come. After the flooring went in, the inside was completed with baseboards and trim around the new door. The exterior of the shed was painted navy blue to match our house. To take care of heating and cooling, I installed a Mr. Cool 12K mini split. This is the DIY version which comes with pre-vacuumed hoses. I've installed a few of these in other projects and so far, they've worked out great. Although the previous owner had installed wiring inside the shed, they never ran power supply from the main house. I hired an electrician to install a 60 amp sub panel and pull power from the house trenched through the yard. While they were doing this, I was able to have them pull a pair of Cat6 ethernet cables. I only need one for internet right now, but I decided to grab two for future proofing or just as a backup in case of a cable failure in the future. And that's it. The shed was complete.
Now for the fun part. Let's see how much this all costs. First, let's review the material cost, then we'll go over labor. Lumber and hardware for the framing was $382. Remember that COVID prices have really driven up the cost of lumber. The new door was $197. The windows were $97 each for a total of $194. I spent $80 on the insulation for the ceiling and $600 for the pallet of mineral wool for the walls. Keep in mind that I only used about two thirds of this for the inside of the walls of the shed. I sold some of the remaining bags and used the rest to create acoustic panels inside. The drywall was $255 and the flooring was $242. The outlets, lights, and switches ran me around $100 and the paint was $60. The only real big ticket item here is the mini split, which was $1,410 before the federal rebate of $300, so let's count it as $1,110 here. The total cost for all materials was $3,226. Now, labor is where I ended up going over my goal budget for this project. For the electrician, I spent $3,340 to pull power and ethernet to the shed. I honestly underestimated this cost by a lot, but I didn't factor in that with the position of my main electrical panel, we needed about 200 foot of cabling and 60 foot of trench digging to get all the way out to the shed. It was a lot of work and the company I hired was actually the cheapest quote I got out of three. For the rest of the labor on the shed, I spent $4,600. Again, this ended up being a lot more than I expected and the reasons had a lot to do with the age of the shed and how much work went into just getting it up to working shape. The skylight left a lot of damage to be repaired, including patching the roof and putting up new shingles. We needed new flashing everywhere to keep everything watertight inside. Parts of the floor also had to get ripped up and replaced due to some previous insect infestation. There was also all the drywall and material from the previous owner that I had to pay to demo and remove. So hopefully your costs would be lower for this if you're starting with a newer shed, and maybe you're the DIY type who can take on a lot of this on their own. As you can tell, I ended up doing a lot of work on the inside of the shed as well. And even though it's about 100 square feet, it feels nice, open, and airy, and it's perfect for my needs. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested in seeing another video that tours the inside of the shed, including my desk. Well, that's all from me for now. So I hope this was helpful for you and we'll see you on the next one.